Just like any discipline that you might want to study, there are some essential terms that we should really become knowledgeable with if we are considering a career in desktop support. By the time you're done with this nugget, you will understand some of these key terms used in the desktop support role, and you'll be able to describe some of the key issues when it comes to these terms. We begin with one that is so incredibly important. It's random access memory or RAM. A lot of times people will just say memory. This is a critical component of the desktop system because as you probably know, if you want to improve performance to some degree, adding specifically doubling the amount of RAM will work wonders. Now there is diminishing returns here. So what would happen would be like maybe you have someone with a Windows 10 system that's struggling with performance because they're at two gigabytes of RAM, taking them from two to four gigabytes of RAM, from four gigabytes to eight gigabytes of RAM. We see tremendous returns when it comes to performance on this investment. The desktop operating system really starts to work great to the end user. Their PC is just now super fast. But as we go from like 16 to 32 or 32 to even 64 gigs of RAM, we will not see as much as a performance increase. In addition to concerns about the amount of random access memory that are in a desktop system, we also have concerns about the CPU that is in use. So there's, you know, amounts of memory that are perfect for the job that you're trying to get done. And there are CPUs that are perfect for the job that you're trying to get done. So if you have someone that has maybe a little Surface Go type device, it's going to have maybe as little as two gigabytes of random access memory, and it's going to have a much slower processor than a higher end, more expensive processor, because on that device, you don't need all that stuff because that device is maybe just designed for taking notes and meetings and accessing internet based services. And isn't it interesting that I bring up a device like the Surface? In the quote unquote old days, we used to really distinguish between a desktop computer and something like a laptop computer. Now the lines are definitely blurring. Most people consider their desktop whatever they're using for their primary work, and oftentimes today that is something mobile like this. Here's the Surface Pro 6, and if we look at this, we notice that from a memory perspective, it's going to be 8 to 16 gigs of RAM, so they give us flexibility there choosing performance and balancing it against price, and they do the same thing with the processor. There's an eighth gen i5 chip that we can use, or there's an i7 chip that we can use. The i7 chip is gonna give us measurably better performance than the i5, and we can balance that against what we need to accomplish with the device. Now, the next essential term is storage, and this one gets a little confusing these days. Notice if we look at the Surface Go device, there's 64 GB reported here, and then over here, there's 4 GB RAM. So they put the RAM term in there so that we could tell that this is the memory, and this first number, 64 gig, is the storage. Why is the storage so relatively small? Well, because it's not a hard disk drive anymore. On this device, it's a solid state disk or SSD. It doesn't have mechanical moving parts. It's very high performance, but notice we don't get a lot of space with that just 64 GB. So that is definitely a consideration. This device is designed to be storing the bulk of data inside the cloud, not on the local device itself. So the term these days is just kind of generically storage. And then we have to figure out, okay, what kind of storage are we talking about? Is it an old mechanical hard disk drive type storage? Or is it the newer, typically smaller solid state disk technology? And then clearly two other terms that we want to be very familiar with in this industry is the operating system and the applications. Here I am up at Dell and I'm looking at a machine that I might purchase. And no, I don't want to chat right now. Thanks. That would be inconvenient timing. Uh, so 
notice from an operating system perspective, they're going to place on this device Windows 10 Professional Edition, 64-bit English. I could save $50 if I backed it down to Windows 10 Home Edition, 64-bit English. This choice is something that's critical, and as you might guess, we would need to know as a desktop support technician, what is the difference? What is the real difference between Windows 10 Home and Windows 10 Pro? Also, if we scroll down, notice we would have the decision on whether we want to go ahead and do something like Microsoft Office 365. So this comes pre-delivered with things like Word and PowerPoint and Excel. So there's going to be some other software options that are critical for applications to install with the operating system. And as the desktop support technician, you're constantly thinking in terms of operating systems and applications, in addition to the other terminology we've mentioned in this nugget. As Bob Dylan once sang, Oh, the times, they are a-changing. We really see that our industry changes so quickly, so rapidly. So we will see new developments in processors. We will see new developments in storage. We will see new developments in random access memory. Although admittedly, that's the area where we've seen the least amount of change over the years. But still, there are going to be new technologies, new terminology that we constantly have to learn. And that's one of the exciting things about this career choice is that we always get to learn new techniques and new technologies and new essential terms. I hope this has been informative for you and I'd like to thank you for viewing.